Hello guys, it's time for Weekly Weird News. Yeah, so it's been a while since we checked in with Italian neurosurgeon Sergio Canavero, who four years ago embarked on a bold mission to do what no other doctor had ever done before. Take the head of a terminally ill man and attach it to the body of an otherwise healthy dead person. At the time, fellow medical professionals called bullshit on the whole thing, saying that what Dr. Canavero was attempting to do was impossible and doomed to fail. And also pointing out that, hey, what the fuck? This Canavero guy kind of looks a whole lot like that scientist from Metal Gear Solid 5. Is this just some sort of weird viral marketing stunt? What is happening? Well, at least he's no Malachi Love Robinson. True. He at least has a degree. He in did something. the work. Turns out, though, no, he does not uh, resemble exactly the guy from Metal Gear Solid. I don't Gear know. Solid. He looks a lot like him. The game came out long ago, and Dr. Canavero has continued on his quest to perform the first human head transplant, or body transplant, depending on whether you're a glass half full or half mm. empty type person. You can call it whatever you want because it's never been done before. Now, last we heard from Cannavaro, he'd tested some of his methods on dogs and mice, severing their spinal cords and then reattaching them, and apparently managing to successfully give some of the animals back the mobility he'd just taken away from them by severing their spines. He even provided video proof, though it didn't exactly get a lot of people on his side, seeing animals helplessly trying to move their bodies after being intentionally paralyzed. Yeah, not very cute, mm -hmm. kind of sad. Despite the apparent results, uh, the scientific community remained skeptical, especially because the animal testing wasn't really done on a large scale. Now, generally, when you're attempting to do the seemingly impossible, it's expected that, you know, you're gonna test out your methods hundreds of, if not thousands of times, but Canavero had only worked on a handful of animals and published results that weren't very scientifically detailed. But despite all of his naysayers, Sergio Canavero is staying the course, and in a new interview with German news website Oom, <laughs> he has revealed his next steps. Now, first off, it looks like the first attempt at a human head transplant will not be performed on terminally ill Russian man Valery Spiridonov. That was what was originally planned, but instead it'll happen in China by the end of this year and involve an unidentified Chinese citizen. Who knows if he would even uh, volunteered for the job. Anyways, the reason for this is actually that Cannavaro won't actually be leading the operation. It turns out that Cannavaro's highly publicized and highly controversial quest has inspired other doctors and scientists around the world, including Dr. Xiaoping Ren, who was part of the team behind the U.S.'s first hand transplant and who will be leading this 2017 Chinese head transplant operation. Cannavaro has been working closely with Dr. Ren, though, discussing the process on Skype daily. He's been working on his Chinese. Mm -hmm. They're best buds. Meanwhile, Canavero says that several more studies on animals have been conducted in China and South Korea over the last few months, showing lots of positive results, which will soon be published any day now. And despite the first human head transplant still being at least 10 months away, Canavero has moved on to do an even more batshit ambitious idea. Transplanting a cryogenically frozen human brain into a new body mm. within the next three years. Basically, raising the dead. The man is Dr. Frankenstein. Yeah. As close as you could possibly get. Here's my question, real quick. So, say it's just the spinal cord severing that hurts the mobility. Say it's just that. Could you take a terminally ill head, put it on another body, and then just have it be paralyzed but alive? Uh, I think that was like one of the options he was looking at. Uh, I mean, you have good insurance, but do you want to pay a little bit extra for the for the old kick and pep in your well, step? Yeah, I think the plan with the original guy was like, any mobility that he managed to get would be a bonus. They yeah. just need to attach his head to a body that like isn't slowly killing itself mm -hmm. and attach enough nerves to like keep the blood pumping and shit. I don't know. Who knows? Uh, anyways, he he spends the rest of the interview praising China, uh, saying that this operation will prove that the Chinese approach to science and medicine is superior to that of the Western world. I mean, we all know that because of that uh, tiger dick drink that they have where it gives you uh, vitality. Yeah. 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 Uh, and then uh, he also talks about how his operations will prove whether the afterlife is real or not, and then render all world religions obsolete. It's a fun task. Yeah, very so, ambitious. Yeah, it's a lot to unpack. This whole thing gets more ambitious and outlandish with every update. And while Canavaro does a great job of selling the idea, as with many, as with any medical prognosis, it's important to get a second opinion. Yeah. So first off, this interview with Oom um is presented as journalism when, in fact, Oom um isn't really a news publication so much as it's a new approach to the kind of thing that TED Talks has been doing for years. Alternative facts. It's a platform for online seminars and Q&As with professionals in a variety of fields, and Sergio Canavero is one of those professionals. 
The article even features a link at the end to, uh, hey, go learn more at headtransplantation.org, which if you click it, just redirects you to another page on oom.com that's basically the official website for Dr. Conavero. They're doing his PR, essentially. So yeah. this interview is actually a self-promotional puff piece. That's not to say Canavero's full of shit, but the presentation here is pretty disingenuous. Uh, then there's the fact that while talking about the whole cryogenic brain transplant, Canavero specifically refers to Alcor Life Extension Foundation, a cryonics company in Arizona that he plans to collaborate with for the operation. The problem is, this is apparently the first that anyone at Alcor has heard about their big collab with Canavero, and they've had to respond to so many media requests that their website now features a statement right at the top distancing themselves from Canavero's statements. It reads, the Alcor Life Extension Foundation has had no contact with Dr. Sergio Canavaro. It is not yet possible to revive human brains cryopreserved with present methods. Revival of today's cryonics patients will require future repair by highly advanced future technology, such as molecular nanotechnology. Technology that is advanced enough to repair a cryopreserved brain would, by its nature, also be able to regrow new tissues, organs, and a healthy body for the revived person. Therefore, Alcor does not expect body donations or transplants to ever be necessary for revival of cryonics patients. Until advanced tissue regeneration technology is developed, we wish Dr. Canavaro well in his development of body transplant surgery for living patients today who might benefit. I'd be willing to bet there's people that would sign up for this Canavaro thing too. Well, people have been signing up for cryonics for about 70 years now. Yeah, but at least Still waiting like, on that tip. You're preserved if it, mm. until it's a surefire thing. With this, it's like, Hey, I'm literally just saying, Dr. Frankenstein, why don't you send Igor over to the funeral home to pick up my rotting corpse yeah. and see what you can do? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, likewise, Gizmodo reached out to another cryonics company, the Cryonics Institute in Michigan, and uh, they were even more blunt about not wanting to be associated with Dr. Canavero, saying, Cryonics Institute has no association with this doctor. The link between what he is doing and what we are doing is non-existent. We would ask that he please not associate his transplant activities with cryonics. The Cryonics Institute preserves only whole bodies and rejects any unfounded predictions about what we do. Yeah, so not exactly reassuring when the cryonics industry, the original black sheep of the medical science community, wants nothing to do with you. I mean, they're probably relieved. They're like, finally, someone whose ideas are more crazy than ours. I bet they're like, Hey, can you stop? Because we don't even have any more of these fucking heads, okay? We, the, you, this is all a big fucking shit. Got a sham. warehouse full of these fucking heads. Yeah, it's just a bunch of freezers that are empty. These people give us $20,000. We put their head in oh, a freezer. Oh, whoops, I guess I didn't bring you back to life, but you'll never know. Yeah. Disney is spinning in he, his Disney was, head box. He, that's an urban legend. <laughs> Disney did not get his head frozen. Uh, he, he was thinking about it, never got around to it, though. Ted Turner? Ted Turner is alive and well. Oh. Well, I'm sure he's looked into it too. Yeah, him and Canavaro are gonna be like this. Yeah, anyway, maybe, uh, you know, as crazy as this all sounds, maybe 10 months from now, Dr. Canavaro and his Chinese friends will get the last laugh. At this point, they're gonna do it regardless of anyone's criticism, so fuck it, let's see what you can do. Put sure. that head on that, put the man's head on the body. And then put a head on a dog's body. Yeah. Who's a good boy? Why not? Now let's move on to another update from an old story from this show. Remember Chop and Steel? They're the strongman duo who, a few months back, convinced multiple local news morning shows to have them on as guests to demonstrate their strongman abilities, despite having apparently no more than average fitness knowledge or strength whatsoever. They were, of course, trolls, and good ones at that. Chop and Steel are actually Nick Pruer and Joe Pickett, the founders of the Found Footage Festival. It's a film festival and website devoted to weird old clips found on VHS tapes at garage sales and thrift stores. Yeah, so Chop and Steel was an attempt at viral marketing and producing some original content for Found Footage Fest, and we would say that they did a fantastic job. Mm -hmm. The videos were great. But one of those TV stations that they trolled, WEAU in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, is so embarrassed and offended at what Chop and Steel did to their Hello Wisconsin morning show that they are suing them for defrauding the TV station and misusing airtime to advertise their own brand. The complaint states that Jerry Chubb, the duo's non-existent representative who originally contacted the station, lied about Chop and Steel having been on America's Got Talent and lied about Chop and Steel performing a series of live events around Wisconsin using their muscles to entertain and educate. If the person's made up, can he really tell a lie? No. Case closed. Checkmate. Rick's court is... Dun, dun. Yeah. Dun, dun. So it's, yeah, essentially they're suing Chop and Steel over their own inability to do a simple Google search or fact check basic information. Skills that you would assume a news station would have experience with. Not doing themselves too many favors on the whole fake news alternative okay. facts front. No. Uh, now these shows are 
of course, so desperate for content though that they enthusiastically agreed to have these guys on just based off an email. So they came on and banged tennis rackets together, karate chopped some sticks, stomped on wicker baskets, and whatever. Chop and Steel claimed that afterwards, the news anchor emailed them and was good natured about being pranked, so that's fun. Now, the station's parent company, they're obviously pissed, and uh, they're now demanding a full audit of all of Found Footage Fest's accounting to see how much they profited off of WEAU. Sad. Yeah. And by the way, remember last time and I was like, you ever have the Christian guys come and like rip the phone books in half? Yeah, power Apparently, team. Apparently, everyone prolific. in the comments, yeah. yeah. They were like, oh yeah, they came to my school. Yeah. Which is a clear Public violation schools, yeah. of church and state separation. Yeah, also I don't see how tearing a phone book in half proves anything about Jesus. Well, he makes you strong, like milk. Is that how it works? Yeah, you drink the, the blood of Christ, you drink milk, they both give you iron and vitamin D. But then if you cut your hair off, you lose the strength, as we saw with Samson and Delilah. Yes. So grow it's your a, hair you know, long and cut up phone books with yeah. your hands. Or go to the gym every once in a while. No. Power of Christ will make you strong. The power of Christ can power of Christ yeah. compels you to rip phone books. The more you believe, the more phone books you will destroy. And yes. their phone books are slowly dying off, so you hurry up quick. They're getting easier to rip every year because of how small Now you're gonna have to getting... rip a laptop in half because yeah. it's all going digital. But before we get into the second half of the show, we have to say thank you to this week's sponsoring advertiser, Blue Apron. Yum. Blue Apron ships you a weekly box filled with all the fresh locally sourced ingredients you'll need to make three truly delicious meals at home. They make incredible home cooking very easy and accessible by delivering seasonal recipes with easy instructions and pre-portioned ingredients right to your door, all for less than $10 per meal. I made a meal last night. I sure did too. Uh, some of the Blue Apron meals available in this month, May, include beef teriyaki stir fry with sugar snap peas and lime rice, baked spinach and egg flatbread with sauteed asparagus and lemon aioli, three cheese and baby broccoli stromboli with tomato and oregano dipping sauce, and crispy salmon and roasted potato salad with pickled mustard seeds and creme fraiche sauce. Fraiche. Creme fraiche. Creme fraiche. See, Blue Apron recipes are always super eclectic. They'll have you cooking stuff that you can't even pronounce. <laughs> So, uh, and there's so much variety that you'll never get the same recipe twice in an entire year. Now, for you guys, our viewers, Blue Apron is offering your first three meals for free with free shipping if you go to blueapron.com slash weekly. Head over there and check out this week's menu. You're gonna love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron. So don't wait. Again, that's blueapron.com slash weekly. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. It is Creme the, fraiche. the only subscription box service that I have never canceled. It's true. I've, yeah, I've been a customer it, for almost an almost entire year Almost a year, now. yeah. It's crazy. Yep. Anyway, let's get to the second part of the show where we look at some of the best. Weirdest headlines from just the news media in general, starting with protesters throw Pepsi cans at police during May Day demonstrations. Fuck you, Pepsi. Also, fuck these protesters. Like, yeah. They, uh, they hit a police medic in the head. And uh, <sighs> they were all like these like Antifa anarchist protesters where they're just like- Just the worst. We need people to get on our side and we're going to do that by <laughs> just committing acts of violence in the name of liberal policies. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. There's Maybe just stay home. On both sides of the aisle. So, you know what? Yeah. No, they, uh, Bad. Put the Pepe kids and the, the Antifa Black Bloc kids. kids off in an island, you know, let say, him, hey, give one of them the conch shell. You guys can fight this out for as long as you want, and whoever wins, that's who gets to pick the next president. But yeah. that's, you, you're really just gonna let them Send kill them each other. Send them off for death, yeah. yeah. Uh, anyways. I support that. And you can have all the Pepsi you want. Yeah, no, just keep dumping uh, Pepsi on the island. Yeah. It's great. Give me a great reality TV show. I love it. Mexican cartels use Ford Fusions to smuggle marijuana into Minnesota, because why would you use uh, an eco-friendly car uh, yeah, don't dogs. put it in the Chevy Volt. That thing will fucking catch on fire and you'll now, lose all that It wasn't the Volt's weed. fault. Ah! Still, a Chevrolet is I don't know. How many electric along. cars have you owned? Just one. And how many have caught on fire? You know, you might have a point. 100% fatality. <laughs> uh, but no yeah, apparently uh, El Chapo's gang, <laughs> they, uh, they have a contact at the Ford plant in Mexico and they're just filling the spare tire compartment. No, they take out the spare tire, they put in like 100 pounds of weed and then at some point, once they get across the border, people are supposed to intercept it, but they didn't. So they figured this out, and then they like looked into all the other Fords that were sent out by this dealership, and it was like all these fucking people who were driving around for weeks with like thousands of dollars of weed in their car without realizing it. Could have gone very badly. Yeah, well, I still can't believe that there's so much marijuana coming up from Mexico considering 
Oh, it's, it's all garbage weed, too. Yeah. It's all just the shittiest swag. Yeah. But they're selling it for, they're just basically trying to undercut the American weed industry. Well, I mean, that's a positive thing for legalization. It's It's gotta be like hurting their business. Oh, I, I believe that it definitely and using, is. They, probably, they used to be shipping it in like, uh, like a Lexus or Maserati. Now they're going down to Fords. It's got a big wheel compartment. I guess so. Flint puts 8,000 people on notice for tax liens for unpaid water bills. It's almost like you don't want to pay for water that might poison you. Yeah. This poisonous water that I haven't been able to safely use for the last two years, I don't really feel like paying for it. Well, uh, we're gonna have to take your house then. It's like when, uh... What's your problem, man? In a less serious way, it was like when that uh, gas leak happened in LA. It was like, oh, yeah. hey, by the way, your bill's like five times as much now. It's like, uh, it, your fucking pipe failed, buddy. <laughs> we do the fucking up and we pass the expenses <laughs> on to you. Yeah, it's a fun system. Yeah, and also, Flint, that water still sucks. Yeah, it's the not The people fixed. there, they have to buy all their fucking water at the supermarket. And like, that, that includes like cooking and cleaning and like, when they bathe, they can't touch their eyes Was and shit. Was it just the urban legend that uh, Insane Clown Posse sent a bunch of Fago up to Flint? Was that just the rumor? I mean, they, they're pretty nice guys. It wouldn't they are surprise nice guys. me. And they, they do rep they, the- They love Michigan. They love the state of Michigan. That's where their you know, fan base is. They're, Anyways, uh, I hope Flint gets it sorted out, but it doesn't seem like it's gonna happen anytime soon. Yeah. And you know what? Lead in the water pre-existing condition. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Uh, how is it my fault as an insurance company <laughs> that your water is full of toxic lead? Yeah. Denied. Denied. America. Virginia police probing mystery of shaved cats. Mm, someone's shaving these cats? Yeah, or someone in this are Virginia hairless, neighborhood. Hairless cats. Oh, they're finding the cats. It's kind of creepy. They're finding like these domesticated cats and kidnapping them and then shaving their stomachs, just like the stomach areas. Hmm and uh, it's happened to like a dozen cats in this neighborhood. No one can figure it out. And they're like, if you see someone shaving a cat, call the police, because it's probably not their cat. Maybe it seemed like it'd be an easy thing to spot. Yeah. Well, you'd think. You would think, but you know, it starts with shaving cats. Where does it end? Where does it end, yeah. Shaving beavers. Mm-hmm. A neighborhood covered in poop is at war over whether majestic peacocks should stay. Is this in Florida? Yep. I was just gonna say, they're peacocks, they roam wild. Not, yeah. Not, not exactly wild, but people buy them yep, and just let a, them go. That's exactly what fucking happened. Yeah. So this is in Miami-Dade County and uh, in this pretty nice little like community. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they're not sure who, but some someone nearby was like, basically bought a bunch of fucking peacocks yeah, for buy decoration. Want there. And then people just let yeah. them go. And then they just go. And apparently they are, they shit everywhere. They take huge shits. Mm -hmm. uh, they're loud. Uh, they assault people while they're just walking down the street. Oh, they're, they're super mean yeah, if you get, and you got, you get one cornered. They're like a, like a goose. Yeah. Come after and they, uh, apparently they're, they're fucking stupid. So everyone's cars are getting banged up because the peacocks will see themselves <laughs> in the reflection of the car and just like bash their yeah. faces into it. Uh, and so this neighborhood, like half the people are like, we need to get rid of these fucking invasive peacocks. And the other half's like, oh, but they're so pretty. Yeah, well. All the animals poop, what's the big deal? I'm not gonna incriminate anyone, but when we were growing up, there was a specific spot. It was at the flea market. They were, they were just roam, like there'd be like a dozen of them at the yeah. flea market. And one time, one of our friends grabbed one of the peacocks in like a giant laundry bag and, and took it to my friend's apartment and just let it loose in his apartment because he thought it'd be funny. What the fuck? Hey, we, we, we were young. We don't know any different. Did the peacock just destroy that apartment? Yeah, no, it just wrecked the place. Yeah. It freaked him out, too. Oh, I mean. Uh, it was like, I think the, the uh, what's the what's the thing where you can't be tried for a crime anymore? Uh, double, no. Statute uh, of limitations. Uh, statute of limitations. Yeah, this was at least 17 years ago. Yeah, it's so fine. I, think we're, I mean, the fine. peacock's dead already of yeah. natural causes, yeah, probably. Yeah, natural causes. Yeah. I think literally, and it just did what the same thing with this did because I think when he found it, he just let it out into the into the yard, and it just went on its way. Good luck, buddy. Yeah, I mean th that's what's the one of the crazy things about Florida is that like, not only are the natural wild animals insane, yeah. like there's just boars in the woods. The fucking. The Do fucking... you think Florida is the Australia of America? I think, so. I think so. Yeah. In terms of like the natural, the natural. Flora and fauna are the most dangerous and exotic, and then we also have the problem of people just 
dumping every possible species yeah, there? Yeah, because it's like tropical, so they'll bring in shit. And the thing is, the ecosystem is so insane there because it's a tropical climate. Yeah. They have everything coming out, out of the ocean, but you also have like all these species that just eat one another yeah. constantly. In this like crazy it's full of pythons, right? And they're not native. People just bought, people just bring them in and just they bought them go and they pythons. Get like, hey, it's just like home. Here you go, buddy. Yeah. Uh, and then there's crocodiles there that aren't natural. Yeah. It's like these alligators look like they could use some cross-species company. Yeah. Let's unleash some al uh, crocodiles. You still gotta go there. I gotta take you there. I mean, I've point. been to Orlando. Oh. It's a shithole. Orlando. I hated it. Mm. And, and we went to Miami. It was beautiful. Actually, I loved Miami. Plus, I just didn't like any of the people that live there. It's different. Yeah. Jaden Smith accessorized his Met Gala look by carrying his own severed dreadlocks. I don't like the use of the word severed here. Yeah. It's hair. Yeah. Cut. Yeah. Shaved. Oh. Shaved. <laughs> they severed his dreadlocks. Is Dr. Canavero going to be able to reattach them? I think you're right, though. I think he's cleaning up his act for uh, run for president. He got all uh, the crazy shit out of the way first. He's walking around with a, his own hair. Just to prove it. It's like a trophy. And he's wearing a grill. Like, crazy Jaden's gone. He's got blonde hair. I mean, like... I, I, I don't think he's dropping the crazy, but I think by the time he's like 30, he'll have gotten it all out. He'll be an upstanding member of society. And yeah, he'll probably run for president or something. Yeah. Yeah. Good for you, Jaden. Why not? Yeah, why not? <sighs> Plus the Met Gal is just ridiculous all around. Yeah, my favorite picture was uh, uh, P. Diddy just laying down on the stairs. He's in, he's in like a full like penguin suit. Not like an actual penguin suit, but like mm -hmm. a, a suit with a cane and everything. And he's just laying down. Plus the Lil Yachty memes are yeah. amazing. Met Gala is like the Comic-Con for uh, super rich uh, design focused people. Because yeah, like none to, uh, of the clothes are actually clothes you would even wear in public. They're just like, hey, what, what's the fucking craziest thing I could design that costs $100,000? And they mm -hmm. do it. And like, look, I'm a fucking lamp with a broom sticking uh, out of best, my ass. Someone did a comparison of... Uh, uh, I think it was Kendall Jenner and Hank Hill, <laughs> but just like, and they have like a tiny little butt. Yes. They got a little butt. Kendall did not get the right jeans. No, nah, she just drinks more Pepsi. Yeah, yeah. Thicken that ass up. T-H-I-C-C. -C. Yeah, you know what? Let's add the third C in there. Yeah, thick. thick. Flower shop owner stole plants from cemetery for months, police say. It's a, it's a great business opportunity. Where do you I sell, find free flowers? You sell the flowers to the morning people. They're not gonna be back for a while. Yeah. The flowers will be dead by the time. Oh, they, they get must back. have died. Yeah. Wonder where the flowers went. Nope. Resell them. Would, yeah, like uh, Larry David tried this on an episode of Kirby yeah. Enthusiasm. He needed to get flowers for someone, and he was like, "Ah, shit! I forgot the flowers." And he, he stole it. He drove past a roadside memorial, and he was just like. But then someone else found out that about it, so he had. You know, it was, I went it was to the whole go, thing. Uh, I, I, my, my grandpa's buried in Florida, but he's uh, way, way away from my parents' house. But I was driving by once, and I'm like, I'll stop, say hi, put, put some flowers on there. I go into the florist there at the cemetery. Oh, it's like, an arm and a leg. This is ridiculous. Yeah. He doesn't care. You know, they he's do been the, dead for 25 years. They do the same shit at hospitals. Yeah. It's a fucking racket. It is. Like, I went and I said hi, introduced yeah. him to my girlfriend, and we were on our way. So I've had like friends and family in the hospital. I'll call up the hospital and be like, hey, I, I'd like to buy some flowers to, you know show person that I care and it's like fucking fifty dollars for a bouquet. Ridiculous. Fuck you hospital you goddamn vultures. And it's only gonna get worse. Yeah. <laughs> now that that healthcare bill. Wow. Uh, and finally after six days man in gorilla suit done crawling the London Marathon. Did they even like was there anything even set up still? No I think he was just sort of crawling through London. He was doing it in like 12 hour shifts. Uh, I mean. Was it Banksy? No, it was mm -hmm. just some guy, apparently a cop, who just loves gorillas, trying to raise money for gorillas. He's like, I will raise money for gorillas by dressing up like a gorilla and crawling through London for six days yeah. to raise awareness. Well, I don't want to trigger anyone, but uh, three weeks, it's going to be a one-year anniversary. Ready to feel old? Harambe died one year ago wow. in three weeks. Wow, I just got a, a chill. Yeah. So, Has it been that long? Yeah, I wonder if there's gonna be like uh, any like memorial services or anything. Yeah, you, like that. But uh, I would buy, be the, buy the flowers at a roadside florist, not at the not at the zoo. Yeah, it costs a lot of money. Yeah, or go get an edible arrangement made in bananas. Yeah, it's good but idea. No chocolate. Can gorillas eat chocolate? I don't know. I don't think they're like dogs. <laughs> Just give it some peanut butter so it looks like it's talking. <laughs> Oh, anyway, God. that's uh, that's weekly weird news. Watch yeah. other Stowe's uh, new episode of Tech News Day. Uh, Netflix got extorted, but sort of who cares? Didn't. And also, Elon Musk's new idea is kind of stupid. 
And a lot of people disagree with us in the comments about that, but I stand by the fact that it's a dumb idea. It's a dumb idea because there's so many things he can improve on in the meantime. Yeah. Anyways, uh, also we have a new podcast, Is YouTube Screwed? We finally answer the question. Yeah, definitively. Yep. So check that out. Bye. Bye.